<laughs> Hello, folks. Welcome to the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. And I am so excited for you to be on the sh uh, be with us here today. I've got a great guest that I think you're just going to love. Uh, as always, I'd, I'd love for you guys to go over to manlypinterestships.com, uh, click on subscribe, and join our email community so you'll never miss one of these great shows. Well, our guest today is Miss Holly Homer. And she's been a blogger since 2007, and it started for her as a substitution for her, her expensive scrapbooking habit, and it turned into a full-time job that she loves. Uh, Holly is a, a bit social media obsessed. She loves teaching what she has learned at both the Business to Blogger blog and her YouTube channel, which is, are both great and you need to check them out. She speaks at conferences across the country on blogging and social media topics. She's been featured on uh, radio interviews, TV inter appearances, and podcasts. In fact, um, that's where I kind of got reintroduced to Holly. She was on Michael Stelzner's Social Media Examiner podcast uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and that is well worth the listen, so you need to go and uh, check that out. She was talking about her kids' activities blog and her Facebook page and how the rapid organic growth happened, so she had some great tips, and I know that I wanted to try to get her on the show. So, I'm, Holly, thanks so much for joining us today. I am so excited to be here, I mean, and I love to talk Pinterest. I don't get to talk Pinterest much. Most everybody wants to talk about Facebook. So. <laughs> well, we'll give, we'll give you a chance here today. I'm sure a lot of people are here uh, to, to watch and ask some questions. So, like I said before, if any of you have questions, just ask them in the comment stream, and we will try to get to them for you during the show today. So, let's just kind of dive in. Kind of tell me what's your, your kind of backstory and how you got involved with social media and blogging. So, like you said, I... I actually became a blogger accidentally. <laughs> I had never read a blog or knew what or knew that anyone else blogged. In fact, it was three weeks into blogging before I realized other people were doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> I got my first comment and like I was like, it wasn't from my mom or my great aunt and you know, I followed the chain and went back and she had a blog and she had a blog role and then I'm like, oh my gosh, there's like a lot of people do this. <laughs> so, so once I kind of got in there and I had really little kids back then and um, it was kind of my like adult conversation, you know, <laughs> it was my sanity to make it through the day and uh, as a stay at home mom. So. I was really, really, um, you know, the early social media was leaving blog comments and, um, you know, prior to Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff is, you know, we were social on each other's blogs and then, you know, Plurk and Twitter and Facebook and all those other ones that came after that has, has really changed that, including Pinterest. Very cool, very cool. Now, you know, you mentioned Pinterest. I know you're a big pinner as well. I mean, I think you have like a hundred and... 1,000 followers over there too, so I mean it's not like you have just a small little presence over there. Um, so what initially attracted you to Pinterest? Were you Have you been on it for a long time? No, um, well I have been, I mean in real, you know, in real time, but in, in blogger time I actually was one of the later adopters, which I regret completely, and the reason was is at that point um, I just you know, you know that feeling, I can't handle another social network, like don't make me go there. <laughs> right. So what was happening is my blogging partner, Rachel Miller, um, she was an early adopter to Pinterest and loved it and it wasn't, it wasn't something that came naturally to me like it did other people and so she was over there pinning and telling me I should be on Pinterest but at that time you had to like have an invite and those were kind of scarce and, and so I just let her do it and just I was I was just avoiding the fact that there was a new social network on there until I realized that we were getting a significant amount of traffic from Pinterest, like more than we had seen from anything else other than search engines to date. And so it was really those Google Analytics that converted me to Pinterest. I was like, holy moly, like if this is the power of me not even being there, what could we harness if I was there? And so um, that's why I, I actually got on um, was to promote Kids Activities Blog in a very systematic way just to bring traffic in. And so I don't know, I've been over there for um, I don't know how even long, probably two years, a year and a half, two years. And so that is earlier than most people in the real world are on it, but it was kind of late among, you know, DIY and kids' blogs and that kind of stuff. Gotcha. So, I mean, it kind of sounds like me. I, I, I went over there because of the traffic. I thought, wow, I'm getting so much traffic. I need to kind of pay attention to this. So, um, 
you know, your Facebook page and Pinterest, did you did you have your Facebook page first and then just kind of said, oh, okay, I'm going to go to Pinterest too? Is yeah, so we we had a, a Facebook page for, you know, since the beginning of um, Kids Activities Blog, which started as Quirky Mama, which is why our Facebook page is Quirky Mama. And um, we, you know, by bloggers, um, you know, kind of, Bar, we had a successful Facebook page. It was sitting between ten and thirteen thousand fans, and um, so we were, you know, we were feeling pretty good about the Facebook game, and and you know, for a while we we're getting a fair amount of traffic on that, and then you know, about the same time that I got interested in Facebook, I mean, in Pinterest, you know, Facebook just stalled for us, and we literally sat at about thirteen thousand fans for two years, and we just kind of let it not even you know, not even think about it. And kind of during that time is when I really got interested in Pinterest and pinning a lot and really collecting things that I thought my readers might like. Um, and that's always been the focus of my Pinterest account is really that mom, that you know, often stay at home mom or work from home mom, what she finds, you know, to do with her kids, what she wants to eat, what's, you know, because that's me. That's what I want to eat. That's what I want to do with my kids, that thing. So, um, we were so successful on Pinterest and we were getting so much traffic from Pinterest in the last few years, it actually made me nervous. So I don't like all my eggs in one basket. <laughs> right, right. And so that was when I was like, we really need to expand what we're doing. Like we really need to get some of this traffic from other sources. And that was about the same time that um, my blogging partner uh, a year ago, um, October, she said, um, we're going to get to 50,000 Facebook fans by Christmas so we can promote this book that we have coming out in the spring. And I was like, okay, crazy girl. <laughs> I mean, dream big. <laughs> like, and so, you know, basically she started it and um, I was kind of laughing at her behind her back and not, back, not actually behind her back to her face. She would admit that. And, but, you know, the thing is, is one of the reasons why I love her so much and why we work out so well is we're both big dreamers. And so we're like, well, why not? Why not us? <laughs> so, and yeah. sure enough, we hit 50,000 um, on Facebook by Christmas. And um, like I was telling you, we hit 1 million um, about four days after we started this process, a year and four days later. <laughs> That is, that is awesome. That is so awesome. Well, I, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from your podcast that you did with uh, Michael Stelzner because that is, I mean, that's one that I've listened to a couple times because it has so many great tips on it, and I recommend everyone go do that. Um, but can you kind of give us a Cliff's Notes version of maybe some steps or some best practices you did to kind of uh, grow that? Uh, and the thing that's, it's without any ads. I want to make sure people know oh, yeah. that. It's all organic traffic. All organic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that is just that just blows your mind. So kind of give us some cliff notes or best practices that you use kind of to, to help spur that along. Sure. And actually, this is what's so funny about this is is the initial early – I mean, we got to um, got to the 50,000 at Christmas kind of trial and error. Um, and both of us are real deep analytics girls, and Facebook insights are amazing. Like, you know, like you post something and you go watch and see what it does, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> So I love that instant feedback. Um, but as we started growing from 50,000 on, um, and I really started looking at the way my readers, you know, I always going back to attracting the kind of fan that you want to have. That's really the, the bottom line of all this. So what do I need to do on Facebook or Pinterest to attract the kind of fan that I want that will engage with me, that will keep, you know, that will keep coming back, that will be my people. And so what I really started looking at was, you know, all the Facebook gurus in the whole world were, you know, you know, post once, twice, three times a day maximum, you know, you know, anything more than that is spamming your fans. Well, I started thinking about Pinterest. Like my Pinterest followers couldn't care less if I pinned a hundred things as long as it, it was all amazing. Correct. And that's the key, is if it's all amazing, it does. your fans don't care. Because you are becoming not just like a source on Pinterest, but you're Pinterest to them. And so that's what we started thinking about on our Facebook page, was, was kind of using it more like Pinterest, where we're sending out something amazing on a regular basis. And we, we, we post about 26 times a day on Facebook. And so if you think about that on a face as a Facebook page, that sounds just nuts. 
But when you think about it as a Pinterest stream, like my readers would totally look at 21, 21 six pins in a row as long as they were all amazing. And that's really the key is you can't be spammy, you can't be not amazing, or then that's when you get into trouble with your fans. Gotcha. Well, and I think the one of the big takeaways from that from that is you know your audience. I mean, you took the time. I mean, you know, you're both you, you and your partner. You said you were um, big stats people. Well, you, you you found out who your audience was because you dug into those stats and figured it out. So I think that's important for our audience to hear is that you know it, that works for you, but you know your audience. You know that they don't care as long as it's great parenting stuff that you can pin as much as you want. Right. So, well, gotcha. and. The second, the the flip side of that, which I think always makes people super nervous, is um, is in fact one of the recent conferences I spoke at. Somebody raised their hand and says, "You know, I notice that I get about ten unlikes a day on my page," and I said, "Those are great. Like you want that. Like you want as many unlikes as your page because those people are dead to you. You don't. They don't like you. You don't like them. Like right. that's not your people. I, you know, and I, we in fact." I had my computer open and we looked in and we had my page had had 300 unlikes that page that day and I'm like so nobody in here can complain until they're getting 300 unlikes a day on their page because those aren't your people and they will just drag you down and I feel the same way on Pinterest like you want those people that will keep repinning you because those other people are just dead weight to your right. to your kingdom <laughs> right. right exactly Exactly. Well, kind of back to some of the best practices maybe. Um, are there certain types of Facebook posts that work best for you that you use every time or do you mix them all up? So we do mix up and we really, um, I kind of think about it in thirds. Like um, a third of our content that we go out, on, that goes out on Facebook is our own content. Um, things from Kids Activities blog, um, you know, something maybe recent, something from our archive, something timely, maybe something from last Christmas, that kind of thing. And that's that's very varied. And um, and not everything we write hits our Facebook page. We know we're not going to set ourselves up for failure. You know, like, <laughs> we're going to just you know do what we know will work because that's a major traffic driver. So that's about a third of our page, and then a third of our page or more some uh, on most days is just amazing content that we find that um, that we want to share that's amazing and it's you know links to you and links to you know the blogger next door but those are things that and I always feel like if you wish you had written that that's a perfect thing for your audience mm, that's good and then the third other third is what I call kind of page builders and those are things that are going to get your engagement up so like we ask questions several times a day our Fans love to give opinions, and if, you're, if you ever want to want some giggles in the evening, open up my Facebook page and start reading comments. <laughs> they get really, really passionate about stuff, which is great because that's why we we, we recruited them to do that. So we ask three, we ask about three questions a day, um, and some like we might post a post that um, is kind of a thought provoker or a conversation starter. So that's a page builder. Um, Another gotcha. thing that I think is a page builder for us is actually our affiliate links, believe it or not. Because people, you know, it's not just about selling, but it's about, the, you know, we found something really cool. Like, what do you think? Have you tried it? You know, is it something that you've used? You know, and that gets that conversation started as well. Wow. Those are some, those are some great tips, I think. And so, um, once again, I think it's knowing your audience. And, and, did you wait to ask those questions because, you know, if you just started a Facebook page, there's not really an audience, and if you're asking a question, nobody will answer it. So did you wait till you got to some so, uh, some number before you really started implementing that? That was really, really funny because we, um, you know, we had were patterning ourselves after other pages that were doing, like, those really pretty infographics with, like, the inspirational sayings. Which right. I tried, I tried thirty of those, and every single one of them failed. <laughs> <laughs> My people don't like those, but I don't like them either. So I guess that's like totally even. So um, and then I was doing like those general questions, like what are you making for dinner, and like crickets. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm making for dinner. Why would these people on Facebook know what they're making for dinner? Right. So it was really funny. It was kind of out of desperation at one point is that we had noticed some readers were asking questions on our, you know, messaging the page with questions. And so 
I just posted one or two of them and people went crazy over them when they were specific. So it was like, my two-year-old has been body, potty trained for three months, but now he's not kept pooping in the potty. What should I do? And when you think about it, it that's how we talk to each other in real life. And that's yeah. what my readers were wanting. And so I was trying to do these you know, generic questions that were falling flat. But when we actually made them personal and started solving each other's issues, that's when those questions just took off like crazy. Wow. Uh, great advice. Great advice. Being specific on those questions, I think, is uh, key. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, you know, there's been some news lately that, you know, Facebook's coming out, even they're going to throttle organic posts even more from pages, you know, in this coming year and stuff. Are you guys thinking about maybe having to pay for posts in the future, or are you just going to keep doing what you're doing? Has that not affected you at all? Yeah, we can't afford it. I mean, like, you know, we're a blog. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the reason why, you know, we have the organic Facebook is because I'm a bootstrapper. Like, I'm not going to put money into anything that um, I can grow myself. So um, I'm now Facebook has just marked my page <laughs> off the face of the earth. <laughs> but I feel like Facebook needs me. <laughs> and, mm. you know, Facebook needs me to compete with Pinterest compete with these other social networks because my fans are not people that are going out and sourcing this, but they're sharing it and they want to share it and they're coming to my page or seeing it in the stream and then sharing it. And Facebook at its very core needs shareable content. So I really feel like as long as I'm still on the mark with shareable content, mm -hmm that you know, there's just no ratcheting down that Facebook can do that would be in their best interest. Now, I will tell you that we feel it, you know, every few weeks, it's usually on a Tuesday or a Thursday, we can feel the actual ratcheting down. And it's been happening ever since about last January, where they right. just need to turn it down. Um, but what that means for a page is that you just have to be better. You have to find better content that fits with your um, with your audience because what will happen is this content goes out to just a handful of your fans. It's not like unlike Stumble Upon was in the early days where it would send it out to you could actually see 40 people, and depending on what 40 people did, you know you either you know hit the front page of Stumble Upon or or you didn't, and that's kind of what Facebook is doing. Is it's sending out to a small group. And depending on if those people like it, it will just start slowly snowballing. And that snowball is much longer over time than it used to be. It used to be just an hour or two. Now it's 25, 26 hours that are the lifespan of a post. Wow. Depending on shares. And so you have to be able to put something out there that people really, really, really want to share or it's going to just die immediately. Gotcha. Gotcha. Good stuff. Um, we have some questions real quick I wanted to, to pull up from some people in our audience. Uh, one is from my buddy Wade Harm, and, and I think he means this for Facebook, but he says, what are your suggestions as far as reach when you don't have a million followers on, I'm thinking he means Facebook because that's what we're talking about. So do you have, <laughs> when you don't have a million followers? Do I don't. These, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I would assume that these same thing, the same things work that you're talking about, the asking specific questions, uh, finding good content, that kind of stuff, and be better than pretty much everybody else, I guess. Yeah, in fact, the, low, the smaller you are, the better you're going to have to be. And um, that's just the hard, cold, hard truth. And once you build enough of an audience based on that stellar content, and the truth is, if you can find better stuff elsewhere than you're publishing yourself, go promote it until you get to a point where you have a little cushion and you can start promoting yourself. But make sure you're always recruiting people that are going to like your stuff because you don't want a whole you want to build a community that doesn't like what you write. Right. Good. Good advice. Um, all right. Let's let's segue a little bit to Pinterest now. Um, you have a, a large following on Pinterest as well. So do you have an overall strategy that you use for Pinterest um, in in kind of what you're you're putting out there? Yeah, and and Pinterest is a little bit different for me. Um, whereas on Facebook, um, I think. I'm a, I feel like you have to be a lot more generous to get ahead. Um, on Pinterest, I think you can be a little bit more selfish. Um, and so probably about 50% of my pins are my own. And, um, and 
and it's more of a strategy of how my content will appear on all the relevant boards that I have over time. So whether that looks like a humongous spreadsheet, <laughs> which it has, you know, as far as you know, something might appear here, and then next week it might appear here, and then the following week here, um, so that because you, you never want like you know the ten pins in a row that are identical. Right, right. <laughs> Not a good strategy, but those ten pin, those tens, ten identical pins over ten weeks, great strategy. Very cool. Um, now, do you still get, even though you have a, a huge Facebook page, do you still get quite a bit of traffic with Pinterest? Yeah, so Facebook is our number one traffic driver, but um, Pinterest and, and search engines are neck and neck. And I love that um, because then we can work on both and see where we're affecting it. But, um, but yeah, if Pinterest went away yes, tomorrow, I would be super sad because it is a very large chunk of our, of our um, because you think about our audience is on Pinterest. You know, moms are there pinning, um, it's, they're there just like they're on Facebook. And a lot of times, what's so cool about having the Facebooks, both, having both communities is that many Facebook fans will click over and then pin it. So if I put something up on Facebook and then you go over and run the source code over on Pinterest, it's that same article I just put up on, on Facebook is everybody's like clicked over and a significant number of them have then pinned it. And so that we see this, the same popular things that are on Facebook are popular on Pinterest, which w through social proof is then our higher search engine traffic. Um, so all those things really work together kind of gloriously. <laughs> Very cool. Well, here, here's a, a question from uh, Kim. She asks, um, do specific questions work for you in your pins on Pinterest to get engagement? Uh, have you ever tried asking questions on Pinterest? Um, I'm going to be really controversial here and say I know. Like I, and I was in the beta test for the question asking on Pinterest and I wrote to them, I said, I will never ever use this. I hate it. This is not what Pinterest is about. Right. <laughs> I don't believe Pinterest is about engagement. I know I've been to Pinterest and they think it's about engagement, but I actually do not. Um, I think Pinterest is about repinning and and collections. And the thing is, is when you're collecting and when you're hoarding, that's a very different, that's a personal thing. That's not a group thing. Now, yeah. like tonight we're running a um, Pinterest party and you can find the information, the invitation on kidsactivitiesblog.com. But um, so for an hour tonight, it's kind of like a Twitter party where everybody will be pinning off of the same board. Now that's a very social thing, but that's a very small segment of the overall Pinterest strategy. Right. I haven't seen much of those that questions thing in my stream. Maybe people got the hint and decided not to. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just don't think that's how people are using it. And yeah. the thing is, is if they said, like when I was at Pinterest, they were like, well, but if you had a question about the recipe, and I said, but if you had a question about the recipe, you'd go to the blog that posted the recipe and ask the blog themselves. You wouldn't ask the pinner. Like, but that pinner hasn't, like, made that recipe, like, 99.9% .9 of the time. So I think sometimes Pinterest is a little confused as to where their content comes from. They're not the origination of it. You know, they're getting that content from content creators that, you know, they should be, you know, crediting and then sending those people back for those questions. Yeah. I, I do, though, like their new messaging app. I've actually got some messages back and forth and, and talked to some people with that. But it's not, it is not the first thing you think of when you go to Pinterest, by far. Right. Well, and I so. think the messaging is really helpful for, like, group boards and that kind of stuff. That was really a disconnect, not to be able to have some control over, over your own board on Pinterest. Right. Right. Um, we have another question uh, from uh, Missy J. She says... Uh, what is the best way to use Pinterest to drive the right traffic to your website, Holly, and Manly Pinterest Tips? And that kind of segues into my other question was, um, do you have like best practices for your pins that you create, or do you just take the great pictures that you have over on Facebook and throw them up on Pinterest? Is there a, a certain strategy you have that way? Um, so what I put on Pinterest and what I put on Facebook are very, very different. Um, Facebook, um, the best type of photo is a square photo if you're doing it as a photo. And if you're doing it as a link with a photo, then you need a gorgeous, um, uh, you know, kind of rectangular one that's 560 by 292. And so 
those things are very short. <laughs> short does not work on Pinterest. And so what you will find if you look at any of our um, articles on Kids Activities blog is that we have we have just a you know, collection of image sizes <laughs> for your for your sharing. <laughs> if you're on Pinterest, you're gonna want to choose something long and and gorgeous. And that's the other thing you have to really think about. Um, Pinterest is a different place than Facebook. So Pinterest people pin things that they find gorgeous and beautiful and kind of dreamy and aspirational. So they're, they're not necessarily thinking they're going to do that. Like they're just collecting these amazing ideas and gorgeous photos and just, you know, just soaking up kind of the inspiration. Facebookers are there because they're going to do it. So if you if you have this um, this super glossy you know amazing cake that would just go crazy on Pinterest and you put it on Facebook um, even if the image is optimized and everything that's going to fall flat in most cases because it's not achievable. So like in fa in Facebook oftentimes you'll see you know things that are shared a lot are kind of crappy photos like something maybe you took on your phone or or somebody's you know, home movie, right. but that's because it's yeah. more personal and it's something that they think they can do. Whereas on Pinterest, that would just fail like crazy. Very good. I thought that what you said about having a multitude of different sizes for people to pin, I think, is key because that just makes it easier for the user for wherever they're at to pin what is really uh, important. Um, another question that you, I just thought about when you were talking was: Are you seeing a lot of of your stats coming from mobile devices? I, I've I've been kind of preaching that um, we ought we ought to really start thinking mobile first because we have so many people using those devices to connect with us on social Facebook and especially Pinterest. Right. So Facebook, um, seventy percent of my traffic from Facebook is mobile, and right. um, Pinterest is at least that. I haven't looked at it recently, but um, but I mean when you think of how your website you know, reacts when someone clicks over. Um, it is a daunting task because, you know, it's 70% today, but what is that going to look like next year and the year after that? You know, we may not even have desktops at some point. <laughs> right. right. Very true. Very true. Um, <clears throat> is there any um, best practices that you have for using Pinterest and Facebook together? Do you actually, when you post your your new blog article, do you immediately go and, and post that image on Pinterest or do you wait and let people do that? How's kind of your strategy with those together? So um, usually like because Kids Activities blog um, publishes two to four times a day so we um, don't necessarily, like, and then our Facebook page is publishing 26 times a day so it's kind of an organizational <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> And so we have separate editorial calendars for both. Um, oftentimes the things that go up on Kids Activities blog may not even hit the Facebook page until that next day because of the way the workflow is. And there's just, it would be overwhelming to wake up in the morning and have to schedule 26 posts. <laughs> so, so we have to be thoughtful about how to do that so that like we're not, my life isn't in Facebook 24 hours a day. And the same thing with Pinterest. So one of the things that I really, Pinterest is a slower thing for me. Like I'll go, like I'll kind of, kind of sit down and do a pin batch. So you know, I'll kind of pin a whole bunch of things at once. Whereas Facebook is very strategic in, okay, this is going to go out at 7 a.m. tomorrow. This one's going to go out at 12:30 p.m. You know, um, a little bit more strategic. Whereas like when I get 15 minutes in the middle of the day, I might go and pin 10 or 15 things. Um, not necessarily all my stuff, but my stuff and some other stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know, we're at like the half hour mark, but I, I have a lot of questions for people in the audience. Can you stay on for a little bit longer? And I we can, keep I talking? can. Okay, awesome, because this we'll have to make it part two or something later on, but this is this is great. Um, I've got some questions. I asked a uh, question, and Kelly Lieberman has an excellent pin, tra pin chat group on Facebook, and uh, I asked, hey, what kind of questions would you like to ask Holly? And I got a bunch of them, so I'm going to run through those real quick. Uh, the first one is from Kim, and she says, how do you easily manage multiple people on one business page but maintain the same content quality? I think she's asking about your team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, there were times when I was doing the Facebook page by myself and that is miserable and you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, especially if you're, 
And the other thing about Facebook is once you start it, you can't stop. It's all about the momentum. So if you're going to post a bunch more tomorrow than you did today, make sure it's a number that's sustainable for you or else you're going to be hating me. Um, so anyway, we really break that down into kind of those editorial calendar bite-sized pieces. So um, we know kind of what is going to go out at each time a day and then who's it responsible for it and um, and like there's you know there's only three of us that even have access to the Facebook page and they're all highly invested in the team because the thing about social media in general and it's something I think a lot of companies and a lot of even bloggers um, don't really think about is how personal that is um, and how how not only does that person need to have a good understanding of what the goals are, but they also have to have the power to make changes on the fly if they need to. So Facebook oftentimes will ratchet something down and all of a sudden the things we thought would be popular aren't even getting seen. So whoever's in charge of Facebook has to be able in that hour to make some changes to the rest of the day or else we're going to be you know, that momentum will slow down, we'll be, you know, a day behind, two days behind, three days behind if we sat down and had to discuss it. So I think, you know, if you're running, if you have someone else running your social media, I think that's a really dangerous thing. Um, one of the reasons why I'm a better blogger today is because I know what's popular on my Facebook page, and now when I go back to write for my blog, I'm going to be able to frame it in a way, probably the same information, but frame it in a way that I can sell on Facebook or on Pinterest. And, and you know that once you've been on Pinterest for a long time, you're like, oh, I know that image will be amazing on Pinterest. And that's the kind of, you not only will feel that for images, but also the content behind the image and kind of the sales pitch for that whole thing. Very good. Very good advice. Um, another question we had from, from Melissa Will, she says, um, are all your posts? She asked if you're all your posts scheduled in advance using Facebook Schedule, or are they posted live? Is there any difference in reach? Okay, so I'm like the girl who doesn't like the third-party schedulers, and um, because we've tested it, and they just haven't given me as much reach as when we use the Facebook scheduler or the live reach. Um, I do not know if that's because Facebook doesn't like third-party schedulers. The third-party scheduler gurus will say, no, no, there's no difference. But you have to remember that you're putting a whole filter between you and this platform. And one of the benefits of, of me is still in the middle with a million fans, still in the middle of scheduling my Facebook page on a daily basis is because it gives me instant feedback on what my community wants. And so if I was using a third-party scheduler, I'd be posting a bunch of stuff and then stepping away from the computer. Whereas when I'm using the Facebook scheduler, I'm in the middle of Facebook looking at the insights, what, ha what happened a few minutes ago, what happened yesterday, what happened a week ago. Um, and I think that's, that feedback's really important. So I don't know if it's because I'm there or because I'm removed through the third party. Now we have done testing with um, live versus Facebook scheduled posts um, through Facebook scheduler and we have not seen a difference. Um, but that's our page and every page is a little different. And so um, I would definitely, if I was running a page, do some tests on your own. Uh, I f yeah, I found the same way. At least I like third party schedulers for like Twitter and some other things. But uh, even from the clients I've run, I've noticed that if I use Hootsuite or some other thing to schedule on Facebook, the reach isn't there. I don't know if it's because people see that scheduled by Hootsuite or something and they feel like a robot's doing it. But I just know it, you're right. It, it, that reach just falls flat, I think, uh, using those for Facebook. Yeah, and I, I know like I got a whole bunch of flack from the, the Social Media Examiner podcast about that. Um, you know, the third-party schedulers swear that I'm just nuts. But, and I may be nuts, but I'm just telling you what's been working for my page. And the, I'm, it worries me when a lot of people who are giving a lot of advice are not the ones that are, are in the trenches every day doing it. And I think that's what people, like, people who are running pages need to realize. They need to go figure out what's working for them. Facebook tells you in the insights, that worked, that didn't. Listen to that. Don't listen to people who are experts telling you what to do. Because a lot of times they are paid 
paid for by other people <laughs> with agendas. <laughs> Right. And now I just been like struck off the sponsorship list of pretty much every <laughs> social uh, media company in the world. <laughs> but hey, that's good advice, and and it comes back I think to you know knowing your audience. It's going to work different mm -hmm. for different people. Different. You know, my manly Pinterest page is going to be way different than your kids' activity blog. blog post. And, and so, and the, fact that, and the fact that people would even tell us to do the same thing is laughable. <laughs> it's laughable. Right. Yeah. Um, there some other questions I have um, from uh, people who uh, talked to me in the pin chat was, um, you know, she asked how big could it get and if there's any regrets. Because um, she's like, man, that is huge. It's growing. It's very exciting to watch. But does it get does it scare you sometimes <laughs> how big it's going? Well, I will have to say, um, you know, I I've always been a bigger is better. I'm a Texan. <laughs> But I will have to say, I think there is a point where um, there is some problems. Um, I Our Facebook page shared uh, a post that was going viral on a smaller um, Facebook page's... Um, uh, so uh, something was going viral on a small p Facebook page. And we shared it from that Facebook page because I wanted to help that Facebook page because you know I could get some more exposure for not only the post but the Facebook page. And within about 45 minutes, um, Facebook removed the post completely and marked it as spam. Um, and when you when you get something marked on spam, as spam on Facebook, there's like no jury judge that you can go appeal. It's over. That link is dead forever and ever. Amen. Um, so and she got a message on our Facebook page saying um, your page has been marked as spam until you until you kind of resolve it. And she was able to resolve that right away. But because of and this has happened to us several times with really, really popular links because Facebook still hasn't gotten a handle on duplicate posts in a stream, which I don't know why they can't figure that out. I mean, it seems really simple to me, but what do I know? I'm a user. And, um, and so that, like, for instance, one of our posts that went viral this last um, in the last month was 75 Christmas cookie recipes. And when you think about that, that is such a shareable post by so many levels of people. Um, not only my moms, but then their moms and grandmas and and you know aunts and anybody that cooks or wants to you know have Christmas cookies or give Christmas cookies. So it was shared at such a rapid rate that within two hours it was marked as spam, and then it's dead. The link's dead. Mm. Everything's dead. And so what you know the the deal is is what probably happened, and this is you know, not anything that anybody has told me, but what I think is that, is that people were just seeing it over and over and over again in their stream because so many people that they knew had shared it that they just started marking it as spam just because they thought we were spamming them with that link oh. over and over and over again. Gotcha. So that's a problem of size that a lot of smaller pages don't have to worry about. Gotcha. Um, one of the things um, you mentioned, uh, your Facebook analytics and how important that is, you know, um, and Kim brought this point up. She goes that Pinterest analytics, I think, are one of the biggest bonuses this year that we got from Pinterest. Just as they work for Facebook, use them, they totally work for helping grow traffic with Pinterest, too. So do you, do you dive into the new analytics quite a bit? I do. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I wish they were a little more um, minute to minute or day to day or hour to hour. Um, but they're so much better than what we had. Um, last year, I actually had a third-party analytics that I paid way more money than I should have for, for Pinterest specifically, just because it wasn't available. And, like, I'm a numbers girl. I'm not going to be able to grow if I can't, like, figure out where that growth is coming from. Gotcha. And then another uh, point somebody brought up, she goes, Melissa goes, uh, any thoughts of having your own weekly social media show podcast? Holly, I would love it. So they're... Loving you here, so that's great. I like I have over a hundred videos on my YouTube channel, so just get started over there. I'll call you in about a year. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, very cool. Well, um, I always ask this question to everybody on my show: Is uh, what are some mistakes that you made that you when you first started using Pinterest that we could learn from? I think the first thing was my complete resistance to the whole. <laughs> idea of another social network. Um, I, I mean, I know, 
I know we're busy and you know I'm busy you're busy we're all busy and I, you know that new thing comes out and we're just like no go away <laughs> I can't do this too but the thing is is those early adopters are always a step ahead um, so you know when those new platforms come out use them you know sometimes sometimes they're going to be dogs and I've I have lots of followers on social networks that you've never heard of <laughs> and you probably never will hear of but you know the thing is is it would hit big I you know I would have been one of the tastemakers in that realm and so I think that whole missing the boat with Pinterest but then I think I want to then you know kind of back end that with there was a point when I was at about 30,000 followers which was um, kind of, I was just tiny compared to like all the bloggers around me that I hung out with. Um, you mm -hmm. know, they were you know concentrating on Pinterest and had a lot more. I had been you know tastemakers on the Pinterest system, and I just had thirty thousand followers, and I it was you know it was I felt too small to do anything. And I know like I know people think well thirty thousand that's a lot, but not when you know like, I have a friend that has three point five million. You know, <laughs> like that's a very different. Um, right. I can't. Help her much. Like I pin some, repin something. It gets like five repins. Right. Um. So anyway, like, but it wasn't too late. Like you know, I just kept at it, and I just you know, I figured out my strategy and just kept working and working and working and working. And you know, like I think that thirty thousand was probably less than a year ago, and I'm over a hundred thousand now. And not only do I see, um, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of blogs have seen their Pinterest traffic decrease. And we haven't necessarily seen that. It's been pretty steady. And I think part of it is because I've been able to build my platform on Pinterest during that time that, that some of the traffic was decreasing. Gotcha. Well, I think your point with other social media uh, platforms is key. I, I've, I've Just for networking on places where, you know, like say Instagram, uh, I've really started using that more. I've been able to connect with people who are colleagues in my field who I probably never would have been able to because I've been lost in the noise on Facebook or somewhere else. But they saw my stuff on these smaller ones and are like, oh, and we connect. And so I think that's one of the powers, too, of um, kind of getting into on some of these other smaller platforms when you first yeah, started. And, I mean, I know you and I both, um, you know, have been in Google Plus for, you know, a significant amount of time. And, you know, a lot of our, you know, fellow, you know, um, friends and and um, and you know bloggers were like you know that's just ridiculous like it's a dead network you know like kind of stuff but and yes it may not have gone the way we wanted it to go but the connections that we've made on this network will will last us the next ten networks wherever those might be right exactly um, last question this is the well the second to last question this is the mainly Pinterest <laughs> tip show. Um, do you have any advice for guys who are getting started on Pinterest? Yes, do it because like the thing is, is you stand out and you like. I mean, you'll get followers just because you're a guy, which is <laughs> totally unfair. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, is you're going to create boards and a community that's unique and to what's there already, which Pinterest will take a look at and probably feature a lot more likely than my, my community, which is like one of a million communities over there. So like I would say if you've got something unique, which just being a guy on Pinterest is unique, um, you've got to flaunt that and run with it and exploit it like for all it's worth. Yeah, start your own show. No, don't, don't start. I've already done it. Um, <laughs> well, that's a good idea. <laughs> So, Holly, where can we find out uh, about you and your services that you offer people? Where, what's the best place to find you? So probably the best way to find me is through kidsactivitiesblog.com. Um, my about page has all my contact information and all the billions of social networks I belong to. So if you happen to be big on one of those, contact me through that. Um, but really, it's, you know, um, I know people, you know, Facebook messaging or, or um, emailing me or just, um, you know, leaving comments on a video or a podcast like this is always awesome. Thank you so much. Well, as always, everyone, we, uh, we just thank so much, Holly, for being here today, taking her time out of her busy schedule to come be on the Manly Pinterest Tips show. And as always, I'd love for you to go to manlypinteresttips.com 
click on the sidebar, subscribe to our email community so you'll never miss another great guest like we had here today with Holly. Because at ManlyPinterestTips.com, we're always adding testosterone one pin at a time. See you next time, everybody. <laughs>